Hey everybody, what's up? Lars here. Um, tonight's the night. I finally got a chance to sit down, and I'm just gonna bang out a really quick program from beginning to end, uh, just to show you how it's done. Talk through the process. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm gonna put it up in your resources in Sakai. But when I do, I'm probably gonna give you a link to another video I shot over the summer, so you have both of the different programs. Usually around this point, just to give you know let people see what's going on. I will just quick whip up a program. So you can see me saving, you can see me putting in comments, you can see me crafting the program. And usually I either do a change program where you give a big amount of pennies and you say how many quarters, how many dimes, how many nickels, or I'll do a Fahrenheit Celsius converter. I think I'm going to do the penny program tonight real fast for you. And then after that, uh, I, think I, did the, I think I did the temperature converter over the summertime. So I'll give you a link to that so you can see that summertime video and you can have this one. Um, Mets are losing 5-2. I don't even know why I bother telling you, caring, doing all this stuff. It's like having cancer. You don't make any long-term plans. You look for good days here and there. It's just an awful, awful place to be. You got this great pitching staff. You're, you're going to have a great season. You were in the World Series just two years ago, and all of a sudden everything just goes haywire because – your owners are a bunch of morons. All right, enough. I don't want to upset anybody, including myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip up a program. Just hit new file, get a window right here. What I do is I'm going to give myself some number signs and some octothorps. And I'm just going to say author Lars Capital. And then I'll say a simple penny program. Neat. Okay. So I have some comments. I have the author. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a comment. I'm going to say, get the amount of pennies from the user. Did not want that to be capital. Already starting out with insanity. Get the amount, shorten that, uh, pennies. From the yeah, anyway. so, what am I going to do? I'm going to create a variable and go call it pennies, and I'm going to make pennies equal to integer because I want to make sure it is an integer because I'm going to do math with it. Input, and then I'll give a prompt. Please enter the amount of pennies. All right. So now we're going to have a variable called pennies. When the program first runs, it's going to ask the user for how many pennies. Actually, what I usually do is a small little banner page. Not a banner page, but a small banner. So print. There's something simple like this. Why did that? Oh, because I didn't do the parentheses. And print. I forgot in here. I'm going to put the penny program. All right. Let's center that as best we can using this crude little way of putting up a design. So then I'm going to save it. Uh, I'll just save this as penny.py, and when I save and run, okay, print that up, and uh, please enter the amount of pennies. Okay, I'm in pretty good shape. So I would put in, I don't know, I think I usually use two, three, four, and of course it does nothing with it because we have not told it to do anything yet. All right, so what's the next thing I'm going to do? I am going to determine the amount of quarters in my penny pile. All right, so I want to find out quarters. So I create a variable called quarters. And with the pennies number, how would I determine how many quarters are there? Pretty simple, right? I'll say pennies. I'm going to do integer division. I'm going to do 25. Okay. And then I'm going to print with pennies. You have, and then my variable, quarters, P. 
period. And that's, and that. So now, what's going to happen? We're going to input the amount of pennies, and then we're going to do that little piece of arithmetic right there to determine how many quarters we have that, and then we're going to print things out. Let me capitalize this because my OCD will not stand for that being uncapitalized. So with the variable pennies, because I want to print that variable, these are string literals, so in between quotes I'm putting the words I want to appear in the print. But with these variables, if they're out in the open without quotes around them, that means I want to print the value in the variable. So here I'm going to print the pennies. So with blank pennies, you have blank quarters. So pennies will be entered by the user. Quarters will be calculated by this equation right here. So I think I'm in good shape. So 234 for pennies. With 234 pennies, you have nine quarters. That is correct. Python will put the space after the variable, so you really don't need it. I always do that because it's an old, with the C programming language, you do have to do that. So I have old-fashioned things ingrained in my brain. All right, with 234 pennies, you have nine quarters. All right, we're in pretty good shape. So if we were just doing quarters, we would be in Fat City. We'd be done. We could get a cup of coffee. Oh, look at this. And we'd be ready. But we're going to do a little bit more. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dimes and nickels as well. So, if I want to do dimes, let's determine the amount of dimes. But, right off the bat, we got a problem. What's our problem? Notice the pregnant pause so you can solve the issue yourself. The problem is that we never altered our penny pile. So, we told you how many quarters were in there, but we never really took them out. You know, we're not trying to break things down. So we never really alter our penny pile to act as if the quarters have been removed. So let's do that. I think what I'm going to do here. Is I'm just going to print the number and then quarters. Lose that. So now if I run it. 234, I just say nine quarters. Okay, so it says nine quarters. So after I print out nine quarters, what do I want to do? I want to alter pennies, but what do I want to make pennies? I want to make it equal to pennies minus the amount of quarters, but I don't want the amount of quarters. I want the amount of quarters in their penny values, right? So in this particular instance, if I give 234 pennies, that's nine quarters, but nine times 25 is 225. So I want 225 taken away from 234, leaving me nine pennies behind, right? Because that's what the situation we've got here. So I have the variable. We might as well use it. Quarters, okay? But we want to say times 25 because nine times 25 is the amount of pennies, okay? So then pennies is now updated. We're good to go when we go after the dimes. We're going to have to use another number because we only have nine pennies. But just to make sure, let's print pennies and make sure we are okay. 234. Yep, nine quarters, nine pennies. Turns out they're both the same. All right. So I think we're good there. Let's do the amount of dimes. So what are we going to do? Dimes equals pennies divided by 10. Right? Then print dimes and then dimes do i capitalize that yes i do dimes and then what do we do pennies equals pennies minus dimes times 10. right so when we run this this time we'll use 236 for obvious reasons and we see one quarter, one dime. We will not worry about plurals right now because there's only one and it's plural. We will worry about that some other time. Okay, we are going to worry about something else shortly, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so I'm in pretty good shape here. Okay, so I'm going to do the last thing we would do in this particular situation. Determine the nickels. And I will say, I'll call it just Nick. Nick equals pennies divided by 5. Print Nick, comma, 
Nichols. And then pennies equals pennies minus Nick times five. All right, so we'll save that. We'll run it. Uh, I think 241 is going to answer that question. All right, so we got nine quarters to get us to 225. One dime to 35, and is that correct? One dime, which gets us to 235, and then two nickels. That's not correct. What are we doing here? Nick equals pennies, pennies equals pennies. Uh huh. We are not doing our math right there. Run it again. And 241. All right, now we're in good shape. All right, a little troubleshooting along the way. So one dime, one quarter. Let's, I don't know, let's go back and do that. 246 makes it two dimes and no nickels. That's the situation we're going to take care of right there. So we update our pennies, so we might as well right here print the pennies. And print pennies. Pennies. So if there are pennies left over, we'll print them. And we'll have everything be complete. So... If I do this and I say 244, I have nine quarters, a dime, a nickel, and four pennies. Nine quarters, 225, add the dime, 235, add the nickel, 240, add the pennies, 244. That is correct, and we're back up. So I think we are in really good shape here. I put in the pennies, and I'm making change, all right, by going down the line, and every time I extract out a big coin, I take it out of the penny pile, and then I go do dimes, and then I go do nickels. There's only one thing left that I think I'm going to do with this particular program. When I run it, what's a good example here? When I run this program, and I put in something like 239, I get nine quarters, one dime, zero nickels, and four pennies. So what's the question you ask yourself in this particular case? Why am I printing out the nickels? It's zero. I don't really, I don't really want to print out something that's a zero amount, right? So I can do that by putting a condition on the print statement. So what would I do in that particular case? I'd want to make sure the variable's not zero, right? So let's do this with the quarters first. And we'll go if quarters uh, where's my not equal to zero, then print quarters. Now, if it's not zero, that means it's some other amount, we're going to print it, okay? So let's do that with all of our things. If dimes not equal to zero, boom, and then just hit enter, and idle's going to indent for us. Now, as we know, because we looked at ifs in the second part of the slides, if that is not true, if it is zero, it's just going to skip this print statement right here, and we're not going to print it out. So you're not going to have any problems. If Nick not equal to zero, done. If pennies not equal to zero, done. Oh, almost. All right. So now, before I do my print statement, I check to see if the coin is zero. If it is, we don't bother printing it. So in this particular instance, 239, I had no nickels. Let's rerun it. Let's see what we get. All right, 239. So now we don't print the nickel line because there were no nickels. Why bother? Real simple one. 24. Okay, two dimes, four pennies. That's it. No nickels, no quarters because the amount was zero. Okay, so that looks, a, that looks a little better. To me, that's a little bit better. Now we could get rid of the plural when there's only one. We're not going to go nuts with that right now. Time-wise, understanding-wise, we don't want to go crazy. But at the end of the day, you see it. Can I get the whole thing on the screen? There's the penny program. You give it a pile of pennies and you make change. Okay? And it reviews a lot of the things we've been dealing with as far as unit one is concerned. We're assigning variables. We're using integer division. We're using an if statement 
to examine a condition to see if it's true or false. And if it's true, then we're using a print statement. If it's not, we just skip over it. Not a big deal. And then we update our pennies and go to the next part to do our dimes, then the next part to do our nickels, and then finally we print out our pennies. Okay? We use to get the original variable, we use the input statement to take, you know, a value from the user, and we cast it. But with that INT making everything an integer, we make sure pennies is an integer variable, so we can use arithmetic things on it, and it's not a string. Get rid of that int, and whatever that number is will come in as a string. It'll look like a word, and you try to do arithmetic on it, and Python will tell us to go pound salt. Enter the amount, 234. Wow, 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 Big old nasty Python error. You got to make sure if you're doing arithmetic, you're dealing with numbers. So there is integer. All right. It's hot out. What is it, the 13th? It's been cold recently, and tonight it's hot out again. With the rain and the heat. Alexa, tell me about the, the weather. Right now in Metuchen, it's 72 degrees with cloudy skies. Tonight's forecast has cloudy skies moving in and out with a low of 65 degrees. What a very detailed report. Thank you very much. I can't... i got to hit that little button or I'll be saying Alexa 50 times and she'll be mouthing off. Um, Alexa, somehow, in the past week, has learned how to say Metuchen properly. That's the town I live in. And for the last two years, it's been Metuchen. Like she was some kind of original Indian. Like she was a Lenape Indian. She always said Matuchin. And now she says Matuchin. Hold on one more time. Alexa. Hello. Tell me about the weather. Sorry. I'm not sure about that. Finicky. Alexa. Tell me about the weather. In Matuchin, it's 72 degrees See? with says cloudy Metuchen skies. Right. Can I do Tonight, that? Tonight, you can look for cloudy Alexa, skies stop. moving in and out with a low of See, 65 degrees. See, she won't stop degrees. in the middle of something. All right, that's better. So, yeah, Alexa now said, she says my touching right. It's bizarre. All right, um, that's it. I just wanted you to see a program from stem to stern, see how I do the comments, see how I do some different things. You want your variable names to be meaningful. You don't have to do A, B, C, all right? So that it's semi, eh, this is kind of readable. It's not, you know, the greatest shakes in the world, but it's kind of understandable, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. As far as announcements are concerned, we've still got a week to go. Unit 1 isn't going to end until September 20th. And that's going to be the day of your quiz. So be ready for the quiz. But you've still got a week. I have released Assignment 1. As you can see, it wasn't very hard. It's not that dissimilar to this, as a matter of fact. I think back in the day, this is why I do this particular program. I'm going to release the second assignment tomorrow. Believe me, it's no great shakes either. So don't worry. You'll have the weekend to do it. Make sure you get your bios in. Most people have in the, as far as a forum post is concerned. So that's a good job. So we're doing good. Everything is fine. We're going to be uh, ratcheting down as far as Unit 1 is concerned. But then next week, we're going to get going with uh, Unit 2. And Unit 2 is going to be interesting. We're going to do stuff with strings and lists. And finally, we're going to get to something called iteration or looping. And that's going to be interesting because then we could really get some work done. And then you could really start examining data and doing some stuff. All right? Then I'm going to get out of here. Uh, keep an eye on your email. I'll be doing some announcements over the next couple of days. And keep doing what you're doing because everything seems to be going along nicely and everything seems to be working out. All right? All right. Good. Then I will be in touch tomorrow and you be good and have a good night. Talk to you later. Bye.